mortals, I'm Dark Lord Kaiser, back after a bit of an absence, I will admit. Uh, work, basically. Let's just say it would work. Uh, but I've got free time now, so I can record things. Uh, so, as I said, I'm Dark Lord Kaiser. This is, is Call of Duty. That is Minecraft, obviously. So, Minecraft being popular on YouTube again, for some reason. Um, I started watching through Jacksepticeye's play of, of Minecraft and went, ah, it looks fun. I haven't done that in a while. Let's go back to it. Um, yeah, because I, I did play Minecraft several years ago. Never really got into it. I was not what you'd call good at the game. Um, I, I would deem myself a very unlucky Minecraft player in that I would dig for hours and not find a single thing I was after, even looking through the wikis to try and figure out where to find things. Um, so I've got a basic understanding of most of the mechanics of the game. Um, but I'm well aware that Minecraft can be an exceedingly dull game to watch, given how much of it is just digging and mining and stuff. Um, you can see holes where I've just been digging stuff. So what I decided I'd do is, most of this week, I set up a, a brand new world, um, and was it a bit more lucky where I got placed this time. Normally when I start these games, I end up in the arse end of nowhere, and there's nothing around, no sheep or um, cows or anything like that. So all I've got is wood, and I've spent ages trying to find a bed, and I get killed by zombies and stuff. Um, so actually, get, I've just got a nice little balance of, of biomes around here. Um, yeah, so it's so a bit of wood supply over there. I mean, you've got desert over here with sand and stuff uh, over there. Nice little sort of meadowed area. Plenty of animals over there. Um, so yes, yeah, so I said I set up myself a little. A little world, uh, and gave, got myself to a sort of a basic starting point. As you can see, I built myself this little greenhouse-like thing. Uh, pretty much the first thing I built, actually. I started off um, just making a, a mud hut, you know, out of, of dirt and things. Um, and then found that, because I couldn't see the sky, I never knew whether it was day or night time. So I would open the doors and go, oh look, zombies, and have to go back inside and wait for it. Because it takes a while to be able to get a bed, which I've got, I've got a bed down there, as you can see. Um, it takes a while to get a bed in this game because you've got to get wood and then find sheep and the sheep are actually uh, the wild sheep are over the horizon over there and it took me a little while to actually find them and then I had to bring some back to the farm and all that sort of stuff so it took, took a while to uh, to get set up I'll, I'll show you around what I've done it's only very basic just so I've got something to look at when it starts. I find Minecraft has got t two types of players the ones who play in something like creative mode and the entertainment factor comes from being able to build a great big complicated thing that requires lots of, of understanding of of redstone and uh, not uh, logic gates and all that sort of stuff. Uh, and those who prefer, like myself, to play in the survival mode and try and see what they can build out of the things they're actually able to find. Um, well, the sun's going down. How nice. Um, so yes, as I, said, I built myself this hut, made it out of glass in the end using the sand. That I mined from over there, putting it in the furnace, make glass. That way I could always see what time of day it was, and the mobs, when they spawn, can't see me. Uh, so, if we have a look out here, you can see I've got a little farm set up over there. Got, uh, you can't quite see, there's some chickens just there. Got some cows, got some sheep. Pens are quite small, so I don't need a huge number. I have more sheep than I need. Um, but I have been breeding all the animals and then killing a load of them for leather and stuff. That over there is my sort of uh, wheat field, as it were. We'll go have a look at it later, but actually I found some bamboo, so I've got bamboo growing all around it. I know there are extremely efficient ways of setting up fields, but I wanted to make mine look more aesthetically pleasing. Hence the reason I've got bamboo dotted around it, sugarcane around the outside, uh, and the wheat actually grows in these little swirl patterns, because I don't need a huge amount. It was just, I said, I wanted it to look pretty. But I do have a backup farm over there, which is just some wheat growing. Pumpkins and melons growing along here, as you can see, uh, and I grew myself a load of bamboo, because that stuff grows psychotically quick. Uh, so if I need to find myself some sticks, instead of going all the way over to the jungle over there and knocking down a tree and then bringing it all the way up here and converting it into stuff, I can just knock. Well, if you take, like, the second... Um, well, if you take anything out of bamboo, everything above it automatically falls down, same with sugarcane. So I can grow all that, take the second block up, knock that one off, and all the ones above it fall. So it's a really easy way of getting a lot of sticks very quickly. Um, so yeah, so we've got farm. Got some food growing over there. Hello, little skeleton friend. Um, 
So yeah, oh, you can see the little uh, little tower over there. I've got some obsidian over there. I found a um, a lava pool and didn't want to fall into it, so I poured some water in. So when I need some obsidian for when I would decide to go to the Nether, I can just go over to there and I know exactly where it is. Uh, down here, this is my my mine. I say I've got a bed there. Chests. Got myself an anvil because I've been able to enchant a few things. Um, somewhere I've got a my enchanted bow. I've got a, a really good enchanted bow somewhere. There it is. Got flame unbreaking three and power three. The only problem with where I put my house is that it's actually on on a hill. So I can hear all these like zombies and things. They're actually just on the other side of like this wall up here. So it often sounds like they've invaded my base when they haven't. Um, but yeah, I've got some enchanting stuff going around over here. Still need to be build more books, but it's a bit of a slow process. You've got to breed the cows, kill the cows, get the leather, um, then get three books, put them in the bookshelf. It takes a while, basically, but as you can see, I can get uh, up to level 22 stuff, so I can, I can get some decent things there. Um, but down, down here, this is just the rest of the mine. Though I did decide to build myself a, uh, a car. well, I say build. I went. I found a village nearby. Um, Nick's a cartography table. Nick's a loom. I don't know how to use either of those, so they're just sort of there. I mean, oh, that looks cool. I'll take it. I haven't learned how to use them yet. They didn't exist. I don't think when I last played this game. But uh, yeah, I've got a spare furnace and a crafting table down there, and that that down there is just a mine. So there's uh, not much, not much worth looking at down there. I've not built anything else. So yeah, that's the. Uh, that's the setup of my little little area. Now the thing with Minecraft is you kind of need a project in order for it to uh, to be worth it. Oh, it's gone. I'll go to sleep. Yeah, I put a clock above my bed as well, just so if I was down here, I didn't need to go upstairs and look through the, uh, the window. I could probably carry the clock with me, and do it that way. But most of the time, you can just see the sky. Um, so yeah, as I've, from the previous times I've played Minecraft, my Project of choice has usually been to build a castle of some description. I thought I'd go with a farm this time. I haven't just on fire out there. Um, see, whenever I build castles, I always decide to make them out of stone or rather than cobblestone. It takes ages because um, you've got to smelt everything. Um, and then the castle I end up building are, are really plain. So as I say, I sort of decided to keep it simple, build myself a farm. Oh, look at Enderman. Hello, oh, little Enderman. So yeah, as I say, I got my farm, got my mine. Uh, got a pyramid, naturally. Um, yeah, so, I said it's a pretty good, yeah, sorry. I know, this is, that's the main project I've been working on, this pyramid. Oh, Jesus, there are creepers for days down there. And I left my bow back inside. This was a mistake. Because, oh, they're going to come all the way up here. I don't want you up here, you stupid buggers. Go away. Don't you dare explode on me, you little... No, you buggers. Okay, luckily you didn't get... <laughs> Either any of my glass, which would be a nightmare to try and replace, or into my base below. On the plus side, you didn't give me a load of sand, so thank you for that. Now, my pyramid. What's growling at me? I hear something. What do I hear? Oh! Oh! Something up there. Oh, you're a small one. I haven't seen across a small one of these before. Go away. Stop being a thing that exists. Okay, thank you, Mr. Creeper, for helping me there. Okay, I need all this. Yes, so, my pyramid is... The basic construction is cut sandstone. Now, to make cut sandstone, you have to take um, sand and make yourself a sandstone block. And to make cut sandstone, you then take those sandstone blocks and put four of them in to get four cut sandstone. Uh, so the, the basic, you can just use it from sandstone that you mine. So if you go underneath the sand, we'll go back to where that creeper just uh, kindly exploded for us. If you go down here, you've got sand blocks, then you've got some sandstone, which naturally forms. Uh, so you can just um, you know, mine that and use it there. Unfortunately, it didn't look very good, so I've been making... Uh, sandstone steps to cover the outside just to make it look a little bit nicer. So you can see this is the uh, the parts I haven't finished yet. Um, unfortunately, it takes absolute days to mine this stuff. Not as long as uh, it takes to make um, stone because you've got to mine stone to get cobblestone, smelt cobblestone, which means getting 
uh, coal or something similar that you can burn. Um, then turning the stone into bricks. It Again, that takes forever. Now, I did put some lights in here. Unfortunately, I don't think I put enough because frequently I can hear spiders and creepers inside. So that's going to be interesting once I've finished everything else to uh, to get back in there. Uh, but as you can see, I've got most of the way up. So it won't actually take that many more to get up here. It is just a case of of mining things. So over there, I think you can see where I have been uh, been mining. And we'll get to the mining in a little bit. Uh, let's just go check up on my, my farm. I'll give you a closer look at it. As you can see, I've got a load of chickens. I don't really use chickens for anything. I don't know what. I just simply collect all the eggs. I don't do anything with the eggs either. So I sort of have them for when I decide I need to make a billion arrows. If I need flint for that, the flints. It's probably hard to come across. Um, so yeah, a bunch of cows, a bunch of sheep. Again, I sort of have these animals. I never really do anything with them except for the cows, which as I said have been killing to make books. But uh, yeah, is the, the bamboo as I said. If I cut down, probably don't need to use a sort of. Sort of this. But yeah, so there's the base. If I cut down that one, as you can see, it just takes all the ones out above it, which is a very easy way of getting sticks quickly. I say I wanted to redesign this a bit. I want to. What I want to get set in the end is a line of bamboo, just sort of along a uh, floor somewhere. Let's let's say over there. I want to get a line of bamboo over there, and then a level above it. I want want to put a load of pistons with a switch at the far end, because. If you use a piston to break the block, it saves you having to mine them all. And you can do the same thing with sugarcane. It's a very easy way of doing that. So maybe we'll do that later. It depends how long I decide to record for. Um, so as I said, but Minecraft can be a quite dull game in terms of uh, you spend... Well, certainly the way I play it. That sounds bad. Um, <laughs> in that if I knew what I was doing... I can go into creative mode and just make a bunch of cool stuff. Um, but I prefer to... So Pyramid is about as complicated as I can conceivably get. As I said, the castles I've made in the past have been terrible. So to make something like a pyramid, to do that in creative mode is incredibly dull. Um, there's no achievement in making so a pyramid in creative mode, because of how simple it is, the design-wise. So to get any sense of achievement from making it, you do have to go mining. And mining is not an interesting activity to do or watch. Uh, but the it's quite a long uh, gameplay loop that uh, this works on to use the industry phrase. So I've been watching... Um, what's his name? Ah, y yeah, Yahtzee Croshaw, for those who are unfamiliar, is a game journalist. But he has recently started a series in which he makes... He's going to make 12 games in 12 months. So every month he makes a different, simple game. Um, and during the game design phases, he talks about, you know, things like sound design and gameplay loops. So a gameplay loop, the primary gameplay loop is what you're doing minute to minute. So mining blocks, basically. The secondary gameplay loop would be turning those blocks into something else, like the uh, pyramid, for example, or make the sandstone, for example. And then the tertiary loop is making an actual structure as a, a general rule. So sort of the... the the steps of the game, what you're planning to do over what time frame. Um, and yeah, the, the primary gameplay loop of Minecraft is mining, which is quite a dull activity. So I thought I would do this and use it as an opportunity to talk about things that I want to talk about, really. Because I play a lot of um, play a lot, a lot of puzzle games on this channel. The problem is with doing a puzzle game, your mind's often... You know, trying to work out the puzzle, so it's it's distracted. You can't talk about things, or you're playing something like, um, or I'm playing Reketeer, or I'm playing Binding of Isaac, and there's always something quite pressing that's taking up the primary gameplay loop. Whereas this is just dig, dig. I know I can do this with something other than a pickaxe, but shut up, so I'm doing it. So yeah, I'm going to use for the the times when I'm just mining stuff. I'll use that as an opportunity to to talk uh, about. Topics in the world, which I know is basically near Rambler's stick, but whatever, I'm doing it now. Shut up. So yeah, this is my my farm. As you said, it's a bit hard to see from this angle. It looked much better without the, the wheat in it. But as you can see, I've got these little sort of swirls in the water because, as I said, efficiency is great, but I wanted it to look nice. 
Unfortunately, when I first set it down, it did just look like a giant swastika in the sand. So I had to uh, <laughs> change the change a few designs up. As I say, put stuff around it just so it. Because you can see the, wa the water is sort of going in this swirl pattern. Which was, as I said, purely because I thought, oh, some swirls would be nice. And I dug it all out, looked at it and went, nope, I just made a swastika. And, yeah, that's... I'm neither Buddhist nor a Nazi, uh, nor Nigel Farage. Who, oh, sorry, he comes under the second category, doesn't he? So uh, I have no business making swastikas. So, yeah, the farm is about how I like to do farms. Some people just put a single gate and guide things in. I like to have this sort of... Um, Set two tier system so that if I want to go, let's let's go get some eggs. I get some eggs from the chickens. If I go through here, through here. I can collect all these eggs. Ah, look! So my chickens have escaped while the gate was open. Oh no! Whatever shall I do? Don't worry. I don't have any seeds on. This is a mistake. As you can see, because the the gates opened by the pressure plates on a single way in, then the chickens wander around in there will naturally have to come through here at some point. Um, and on the way out, I open the gate, and the pressure plate automatically shuts the door behind me. Hey! 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 No! Unfortunately, it does have this slight problem of that when one gets out, he then opens the gate and all the others get out. Luckily, if I go get myself some seeds, there's some seeds. All I need to do is just stand at the far end. So they, they all follow the seeds, you see. So with the gate open, I can walk through here, and it locks them all in that way instead. See? See? I'm a freaking genius, me. Go away, seeds. Don't worry. Now, not to say I don't do incredibly stupid things in Minecraft. I managed to make myself a diamond pickaxe uh, within the first couple of, um, well, my first days of playthrough, because, as I say, it takes a long time to achieve anything in this. Uh, and then I went over to... The, that tower, basically. I went, okay, I'll mine to my sort of obsidian ready for when I want to go to the nether, because um, the nether's... You've got some resources there, but it's also, by the looks of it, a good place to get some experience grinding. You just go over and, and mine some of the stuff you get experience pretty quickly. Um, unfortunately, because you're constantly switching your hands around to switch between the quick keys, uh, I then went to switch to something, went to take a... to move to the side, like to the left. Unfortunately, my hand was higher up than I thought it was, I pressed the chuck button and threw my diamond pickaxe straight into the lava. So I was not a happy boy at that point. Some people get upset when they fall in lava and die and lose all their items. I don't even need to die to lose my items. I just am a stupid. So let's go back inside. I've said we've wasted an entire day. I haven't done anything. I've just talked about what I've done so far that you didn't see. So that's, that's, that's part of the other idea of the appeal spectrum of Minecraft is to make something with your own two hands, and then take pride in it. But, as I said, nothing I do is particularly complicated. I think this is one of those games that might be more interesting if I was to play it with somebody else. But, if, again, it ends up with the problem of getting the timekeeping, getting people together at the same time, then coming up with a joint project. And as I said, I'm, I'm very bad at designing things. I kind of have to start building a thing and then do alterations to it later. Um, and if you're doing something big like a castle, as I said, my, my default is usually try and make myself a castle at the top of a hill somewhere. Um, then any small alterations actually take a long time. So, I, yeah, I can hear the spiders in here again. So the plan for this, eventually, is I'm going to put water in here, make myself a nice little moat. Um, and I said a creeper exploded relatively nearby, so we can get more sand to fill this in. Uh, I will then dig myself out an entrance, make my way in, and then the idea is eventually to move all the cool stuff in the greenhouse over there inside here. But, uh, yeah, this, this is full of spiders. See? There's one. Put torches in there, but apparently there's somewhere in there where the light level's low enough to spawn things. So, I came up here. So I originally had four blocks on the top here as well, uh, which I'll put back when it's finished. Um... But I could hear things, who so knocked them out and looked inside, and there were like six creepers and three spiders just wandering around in there. Which was a bit of a sadness, because it means when I tunnel in here, I'm going to have to fight everything that's in there. And if they're creepers, there's a good chance it's going to undo all the work I've been done up to that point. So, as I said, I need to get some steps. So, to get steps, I need sand. I have got loads of crap in my inventory. Let's go get rid of that first. Okay. Alrighty. 
Now, the benefit is, because of the way I've been playing, I haven't died much. I've died, obviously. It's hard to play Minecraft and not die stupidly at some point or other. Um, but I have been able to stay alive for quite a while, so my level, uh, that number 17 at the bottom in the, the middle there, in between the hearts and the food, uh, was high enough to you know, enchant some stuff decently. So I've got four diamonds, but I haven't got... Uh, they're very hard to find, uh, particularly since my mine is quite deep, so it's quite easy to enter into a cavern and just get swarmed by mobs down there, and I don't want to lose my levels, so I'm a, bit, uh, a wee bit worried about that. I need to sort out the... Uh, Inventory. Look at all these eggs I've got. I keep collecting eggs and I don't know why. I don't know what you used them for. Oh well, let's uh, let's get rid of some of this stuff. So, don't. Be, why have I got rock? I don't care about rock flash. Go away. Boo. And the coal. And everything goes. Sound. I'll keep the sound for the moment. Keep some food. Why? Why have I collected all these sodding eggs? Let's keep the mutton, but we'll put everything else in there. Keep the sword just in case I stupid myself to death. And I filled up the thing. I picked up the rotten flesh again. Don't want it. This one was at one point quite uh, quite organised. You can see I put a load of cobblestone in order. And then it's all fallen apart since then. Right, just to stick all this stuff in. Sod. Um, yeah, that'll be fine. Let's go mining with this. Still daytime. Eh, go on. So... I've got a sort of quarry out over this way, which uh, I will take you to. It didn't start off as a quarry, it started off as a creeper exploding on me. Um, not this. We'll, we'll, you'll see it in a second. Um, here it is. So yeah, this is where I've been mining out my sand. Not sure what I'm going to do with this whopping great hole on the ground when I'm done. Because the thing is with sand, right, is if you mine sand, all the sand above it falls down. If you mine sandstone, it all stays where it is. So, for example, if I mine this sandstone here, do, 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 you see the sandstone above stays in place. But if I mine this sandstone here, all the sand above falls down. I've also got to be very careful not to accidentally take out my uh, <laughs> entrance. Now, there is a little cheat you can do, right, to mine sand quickly. What you do is you can mine everything underneath it. And you take a torch, you put the torch underneath, you see, and the torch destroys the sand. So that's basically what I've been doing in this area. I mine out a load of sandstone, then put a load of torches underneath it, then drop all the sand onto the torches, and we, we mine quickly that way. So this is what I'm going to be doing uh, from the gameplay side of things for a little while, which means I can talk about things that I want to talk about, but I'm not 100% sure anybody else wants me to talk about because I'm a talk politics because everything's made of stupid in this country at the moment and I would like to get uh, my opinion on those matters public records which if you follow me on Twitter you will know what my opinions are because <laughs> that's basically what I use Twitter for these days I started up Twitter to try and promote this channel and somehow through I don't know just the osmosis of the internet it has basically become almost exclusively used for complaining about politicians and Brexit. Uh, which has left me in a bit of an awkward situation in that obviously I, on Twitter I go by Dark Lord Kaiser um, and a lot of people take issue to anybody on Twitter giving an opinion who doesn't put a real name to their opinions. Now, I said I, I use um, I like to keep my anonymity for this channel's sake because then it, I feel it allows me to talk more freely about uh, issues in my, uh, you know, real life and work life without, um, you know, getting into trouble with people at work. Because I kind of need my job. Um, so it's nice to be able to, to vent about that with that sort of level of anonymity behind it. Um, and I'd say, I think it's a slightly more interesting... To, to be known as Dark Lord Kaiser than my real name. I just feel that that's an easier thing to remember for people. I say it's just a mainly a let's make this more interesting kind of dealy as well. Uh, but yeah, you uh, you try talking on Twitter to to people, and there's always someone who's going to get to a point and go, "Oh, it's easy for you to say with your." I think someone called it a comic book name the other day. I was like, "Yeah, I'll take that. That's that's fair." Um, 
The problem is that people use it to discount your opinions when they can't actually counter your opinions. Um, so, as I said, let, let's let's start off with a brief recap of what the hell has been going on in the time span that I've been uh, working solidly. Which is why I haven't been making videos, as I said, I've just been at work. So, uh, we had Theresa May stand down as Prime Minister, which was probably for the best. She wasn't actually achieving anything. Uh, and then there was the the election, which 90 odd percent of the, 99 odd percent I imagine, percent of the population are not allowed to take part in. For those of you who are unfamiliar with the political system of the UK, we don't vote, technically, we don't vote for parties, we vote for people. So in my area, for example, I don't vote for my local MP, uh, sorry, I don't vote for uh, a party rather, they vote for the local MP. Um, now, my area is heavily Tory, but as I said, technically, they're not voting for the Conservatives, they're for, voting for uh, Pauline Latham, who is, as I said, my local MP. And you might wonder why I'm very quick to give her name out and narrow down the area in which I live. Um, but because I've been... As I said, if you follow me on Twitter, you'll have seen me complaining at her on Twitter directly. So, as I said, that's not new information to anybody <laughs> that she's my local MP, but yeah, so you can't actually get in contact with them most ways. So whenever I saw her making comments on Twitter, it's like, well, I'm going to discuss that because, you know, you might actually respond to those. She doesn't. She never does. I, I've quite, I sent her messages in the past about uh, policy questions. She doesn't care. Her seat's safe, so she doesn't actually have to think for herself. She just does whatever the party says, and she knows that she'll have a job at the end of it. Uh, which, as I said, we'll get to why that's a problem very shortly. So, we had the the election, which was uh, done exclusively by members of the Conservative Party, not the people. So we've ended up with a Prime Minister everybody hates, except, as I said, a few um, very die-hard Brexiteers. And what was the first thing he did when he got into power? He shut down Parliament, the twat. I was going to call him a coward, then realised, no, no, let, let's be... Accurate, he's a twat. So, let, let's talk about that as a situation. Essentially, dog bark in the background, I apologise for that. Essentially, Boris Johnson has no majority for getting Brexit through uh, Parliament. Um, the withdrawal agreement that... I don't know why I put those there, I don't mind this area. The withdrawal agreement that Theresa May worked out is terrible, so nobody likes it. Uh, and so his plan, for lack of a better word, because it isn't a plan, it's just stupidity incarnate, his plan was, well, if the EU won't give us a good deal, because for some reason it's on the EU exclusively to come up with solutions to British problems now, uh, then we will prepare for no deal, and this will then magically mean the EU will present a solution to the problem no one's been able to solve thus far. Somehow. Uh, it is... I'd call it a gamble, but a gamble has a ch percentage chance of winning. This was just nonsense. The idea that, you know, somehow our problems would get miraculously solved by the people in Brussels exclusively. Because he says, oh, no, we're look we want to make a deal. Um, we just want to change the, the backstop. That's being the biggest problem because, effectively, it puts us in a situation where we have to accept uh, the rules of the EU without being in the EU, and thus not making any... Oh, it's gone night time again. This could end badly, but we're going to keep going. Um, so we'd have to accept the rules of the EU, but without having any say in those rules, which is, you know, absurd if the entire point was to... Um, you know, be able to make our own laws, it's daft that, you know, the people in uh, mainland Ireland would then end up with more say over Irish rules, that, uh, Northern Irish rules, sorry, than the people in Northern Ireland. So, as I said, the backstop is not popular. Um, but then again, there's, there is no popular form of Brexit. The Brexit in its, in theory, 
when it's taken as a hypothetical concept, just the ethereal option of not being in the EU anymore, then it managed to get a very, very slim majority. But as soon as you get into any details, there's no there's no majority for any individual part of Brexit. And that's the problem. So he's trying to force through a no-deal Brexit while claiming that what he's after is a deal, but has no idea what that deal actually entails. So he's just saying, oh, well, what we'll do, right, okay, bear with me, we will go without a deal, and that will then allow us to get a good deal. Are you seeing the problem with that logic? Because there's no logic in it. We can't put ourselves in the absolute worst form of trade agreements. By definition, the WTO rules, the no-deal Brexit rules that we would end up under are the absolute worst-case scenario any country can be under. That's the whole point of them. They are a base for which all other negotiations then build upon. So to put... Jeez, there's something weird happening outside my house. So put yourself voluntarily in a situation where you have no trade agreements with any of your neighbours. I think we'd have a couple with, like, South Korea and something like that. So there's a handful, a paltry handful of deals ready to go with people that um, we don't trade a huge amount with. I mean, you're still talking billions of, of pounds, but you're not talking uh, a high percentage of our actual trade. So the majority of our trade is and always has been the EU which is why it's so important to get a trade deal there, if nowhere else. I mean, if we get a trade deal with there and we don't get one, a good one with America, well, we can we can work on that in time. I mean, we do a lot of trade with America, but nowhere near the amount we do with the EU. Because EU is 27 countries on the other side of a small river, basically. I know it's a sea, but it is so much easier to get produce and anything from the EU than it is to cart it from the other side of the world. And that's why every country in the world gets the best trade deals that it can possibly get with the people right next to it. That's the whole point, because it's cheaper than anywhere else. So, yeah, as I said, we end up in this daft situation in which Boris Johnson is trying to get a good deal by way of getting rid of everything. Um, so, naturally, Parliament are against that as an option, um, and he's got no way, he had no way of getting it through um, parliamentary procedures. So his response was, if democracy is getting in my way, I'm going to get rid of democracy. So he decided to do what is called prorogue Parliament. Which, again, this is the thing, you try talking about this, and you've got to explain what every step of it is along the way, so you can't get a decent flow going. Right. If you're unfamiliar, prorogation is basically where Parliament is shut down So between sessions. So they use the in-between sessions to basically set their um, agenda for the next um, you know, the next year, two years, how long the session's set to last. The idea is that you get your plan in place and then you've then got the next session to then try and act of that plan. Uh, now, prorogation is where you shut Parliament down slightly early, um, but it's for a time. It's basically a timetabling issue. It's you go right. We want to debate. I don't know. Let's say bicycle pumps. We want to make a new law about bicycle pumps. So they go right. Well, how long will it take us to, you know, actually debate that bill, make our amendments to it, send it to the House of Lords, make their amendments to it, and then pass it through? And they say, well, it'll take. Um, so only a simple one, so it'll take a week, let's say. Now, if Parliament's due to close in, you know, four days, then you're not going to be able to do anything with that bill. It's just a timetabling um, issue. So prorogation is basically saying, right, well, instead of starting this debate, getting partway through the procedure, then having to stop, and then having to restart it again in a couple of weeks' time, why don't we just shut Parliament down three or four days early, and then we'll just start the whole thing from scratch when we bring the session back into place. And that's the idea of prorogation. There is a perfectly reasonable logic as to why it exists as a thing. But as I said, it's typically designed for a three, four day, you know, three to five days is the typical length um, that Parliament will be prorogued. 
And Boris Johnson has said, oh, no, I'm not doing this because of Brexit. This is a perfectly legitimate reason, uh, but I'm going to need 35 days to do it. That is madness. That is not what prorogation is designed for. We essentially ended up in a situation where our Prime Minister, that was not elected by the people, was elected by his party, but as I said, that is technically normal. Um, I got myself trapped now. <laughs> um, is shutting down Parliament in a way that is, again, technically legal. The uh, He was taken to court over this particular decision twice. And unfortunately, as of this morning, both of the um, both of those appeals have been rejected because he is, as I said, technically working within this the letter of the law, if not its spirit. Um, yeah, and as I said, he's just shutting it down because democracy's got in his way. Now, a lot of people are arguing in his favour on this one because the argument goes. Uh, there is a mandate for Brexit in a form. Now, we've not been able to agree on the form that the Brexit is to take. The default stance of Brexit is no deal, which I have issues with, but I'll get to that in a bit. Sorry, future dick here. I never really got back to why I disagree with this particular argument, so I'll try and do it in the most succinct fashion I can now. The problem with saying that MPs voted for WTO rules as a default state when they invoked Article 50 implies that there is some way of invoking Article 50 without WTO rules as a default. They had an apparent mandate from the 2016 referendum to invoke Article 50 to leave the European Union, and the only way to do that is to have WTO, for WTO rules as the base if everything else were to fail. The other problem is it implies that future parliaments can't change their minds or vote against things that previous parliaments put in place. So even if all the MPs at the time who invoked Article 50 did accept the necessity of WTO rules as a basis, the f it implies that the future parliament aren't allowed to override a previous parliament, because we have had a general election since that time. Uh, Article 50 was invoked, then we had a general election in 2017, and in that election, 54% of the voters voted for parties who explicitly opposed no deal. So the, the Parliament, as is now, has a mandate not to take us out of the EU without a deal. That very specific situation is, in fact, the only Brexit majority that there is numbers for. Um, I mean, the, there are polls all over the place, but in terms of physical voting numbers in official capacities, that's the only majority Brexit has at all. So, yes. Sorry. Back to the video. Um, so, if Parliament... Hey! What are you doing out here? Stupid skelly man. I'm going to mine you to death. Why won't you die? Oh, because my... <laughs> I thought this pickaxe taking a long time to kill him. Uh, it's because my pickaxe broke halfway through. I had a sword. I wasn't using my sword. I forgot I brought that. Oops. I am a professional. You can prove nothing. And I have lost my train of thought. Where did I get to? I say I've completely lost where I, what I was saying. Um, <laughs> yeah, so the progression has been thrown out of Cork's is working in the... Working to the letter, not the spirit of the law. Um... Oh yeah, yeah, I remember where I was. So the, the default stance is that uh, Brexit will take the form of no deal. That is outlined in Article 50. And when we put Article 50 in, uh, when we um, invoked Article 50, that was the sort of understanding as the default situation. That if the two years passed and we hadn't come up with a... Um, with a better idea, then we'd have to take the no-deal Brexit. Uh, again, I said I have issues with that, but we'll deal with that in a bit. Because the problem with um, pro pro I can't even say it anymore. prorogation is that it's not... Put, if it, putting Brexit entirely aside, the, the argument is that if the MPs are getting in the way of Brexit, then the MPs need to be taken out of the picture because they're getting in the way of 
uh, what is called the will of the people, despite it not being any more. Again, we'll get to that in a bit. Because Brexit's complicated, yo. You can't just talk about any one aspect of it without everything being intermingled. Give me a torch. Now, if your argument is that um, the getting the preventing the prorogation of Parliament, as people have been trying, um, and preventing no deal is getting in the way of the will of the people because 17 million people voted. 17.6 or whatever it was, 17.4? 17.4, I think. 17.4 million people voted for Brexit. Then if you are in any way preventing any form of Brexit going through, um, then you are in the way of the will of the people, and you are effectively trying to cancel, as they call it, those votes uh, by preventing Brexit from happening. In, particularly in its no-deal form, that's the thing. This is almost exclusively an argument about leaving... Without a deal. I need to go get more pickaxes, I think. Yeah, not pickaxes. Now, the problem is that if you're shutting down parliaments to pursue a political agenda, particularly with No Deal Brexit, it's a personal political agenda. It is not one that the majority of people are in favour of. Um, in the, uh, the last general election, which has happened since Brexit, obviously, it was in 2017, the majority of the people, of the voters, voted for um, parties that specifically ruled out leaving without a deal. Okay, so 17.4 million people, whatever, so 52% of the people voted for Brexit. The next year, 54% of the population voted against a no-deal Brexit. Now... People still say, well, that means 90% of the people voted for Brexit. But I said Brexit isn't a singular entity. There is no single form of Brexit which has any majority whatsoever. The concept of Brexit at one point had a majority. The polls have indicated for years that that is no longer the case. But unfortunately, polls are, are quite unreliable, to be perfectly honest. You can uh, make a poll say whatever you want, as I believe the... Was the Daily Mail did, in which they somehow managed to create a poll that has since been widely discredited, uh, but a poll that indicated that the majority of people would be more in favour of uh, leaving without a deal than staying um, in the EU. Now that's one poll, and there are that's why you tend to have to work on a multitude of them. And the majority of polls indicate that people would much rather stay in the EU in its entirety at this point. But as I said, the a poll isn't really good enough to work on. You need to go by, you know, electoral data, referendums, um, general elections, that sort of stuff. And no individual form of Brexit has a majority in the people's eyes, in Parliament's eyes. The only majority there actually is, is not to leave without a deal. So 54% in the general election, the EU election that happened earlier this year, that was, I think, about 55%. Um, like, I don't particularly like using the EU elections as indicators of anything, because the, the turnout was like 30%, and 30% of that 30% voted for the Brexit Party, which meant the Brexit Party had the majority in the EU, despite 10% of the population actually bothering to vote for them. EU elections have always been... Terrible for that. Excuse me, <coughs> Oh dear. This country has always been bad at um, turning up for EU elections, which is absurd, to be honest. You... To come off a slight tangent, the reason I think people don't turn up for the EU elections is because people don't understand the EU, because no one teaches them about the EU. I went to a good school. Uh, about as good a school as you can get before you have to start paying for it. And I learnt literally nothing about politics or the EU in that entire time. Now, the people who may have studied politics in at that school, because there were classes that did that, uh, they probably did cover, you know, various types of democratic systems. The EU is probably covered there. But for the general student population, they said nothing. 
So everything I've learned about the EU has basically been either through cultural osmosis or my own research over the past three years. I've learned more about the EU in the past three years than I learned in the 25 years preceding it. Because this is when the information actually has, has been at the forefront of people's attention. Before it's just been the EU is a thing we are in. Racists like Nigel Farage don't like it. Oh well. And then we had the EU referendum in which Cameron thought he could you know, get some easy votes by his promising to have one. Didn't campaign properly about you know, what the EU did, how it works and why staying in it is the best thing for our country. And then people like, as I said, Nigel Farage and uh, Michael Gove, Boris Johnson, all turn up and convince people, you know all your problems, yeah? Yeah? EU's fault. EU are doing that. The problem is 90% of the examples they give aren't EU problems. I mean, even in his campaign, Boris Johnson held up uh, a smoked kipper. This is legitimately the level of you know, intelligence this man is working at at this point. He held up a smoked kipper, held up a plastic ice pillow, you know, which is uh, put in there to preserve the the fish. You know, it's smoked fish. It doesn't really need the thing. That's part of the argument. He holds it up and he goes, look, look at what the EU are forcing us to do. Adding unnecessary levels of cost and bureaucracy to this uh, this smoked kipper. It doesn't need it. I've spoken to the... The... Uh, the fishermen over in the Isle of Wight. I think it was the Isle of Wight? No, Isle of Man, I apologise. The Isle of Man who who who, uh, who smoked this. And he and he's telling me, look, look at this thing I've got to do. This is absurd. I shouldn't need to do this. I didn't need to do it. Now the costs have all gone up because of this, this smoked kipper. Look at all the, the things the EU are doing to us. We can get rid of all of this. Two problems. First and foremost, the Isle of Man isn't actually in the EU. It's got its weird little own... Thing. It abides by the rules, but it doesn't. It's not actually part of it. It's, it's a, it's a voluntary abiding by the rules sort of thing, uh, kind of like um, Norway, I think. And two, it's not an EU regulation. It's a UK one, a British one. The UK put that rule in place, and that, that's Boris Johnson all over. Find a problem, blame it on the EU, and you know, win. Yeah, win elections by objective untruths. Now, it's possible he was unaware of this particular incident and was literally relying on the farmer who told him it. But you're in a position of power. Your job is to make sure that the regulations you're complaining about are actually regulations that uh, need complaining about. A wasp has just flown into my room. Oh, it's not a wasp, it's a bee. We're fine. Crisis averted. But the thing is, Boris Johnson doesn't plan. He doesn't have a plan for the Brexit. He doesn't have a plan for the UK. He has a plan for himself. Uh, a plan that started around 2016 has gone catastrophically wrong for him at every turn and has left him in a bit of a bind as a result. But uh, no, he doesn't, he doesn't plan. He's notorious for not planning his speeches, for just sort of turning up, rattling off some absurd anecdotes that don't make a huge amount of sense, playing the whole thing off as, you know, a joke. He, he plays the buffoon very well. And part of it is intentional, because he knows that if he's playing the buffoon, uh, but it makes it appear that he doesn't know what he's talking about, but makes it appear that that appearance is an act. When he actually doesn't know what he's talking about, people can't tell the difference. Uh, and that has worked psychotically well for him, just sort of being the political clown, as it were. The problem is the clown he seems to most emulate at the moment is the flipping Joker. Because does he look like a man who has a plan? No. Because he isn't a man who has a plan. Yeah. Uh, Liar Johnson was the hashtag that started trending immediately after he became Prime Minister. I think Joker Johnson would be more appropriate. The only problem is I think it's not fair on Heath Ledger to compare him to Boris Johnson. Not fair on the Joker to call him Boris Johnson. At least the Joker's funny. Have I got enough of this stuff yet? I've just sort of been mining it and complaining. Let's let's see if that's enough. Um, let's get a little torches up there, don't you? But yeah, so he, he starts spouting off about regulations. In fact, there's another one. Um, I was 
if you watched last week tonight, you'll be aware of this one. As part of his um, career pre-politics, he was uh, a journalist, worked for, I want to say The Telegraph? Uh, and he got fired. In fact, he got fired from two different newspapers, effectively for lying, for making up quotes, making up uh, stories. Uh, and he got to the point where they said, you can't do that. You're a journalist. Your job is literally to report the truth. You aren't doing... Yeah, you're fired. Get out. And that happened twice. Uh, and one of the things that he made up while he was a journalist was um, a... Oh, I'm not sprinting. I'm on sound. I can't sprint. Uh, he made up a... Um, a regulation that the EU supposedly had come up with, which they didn't. He completely made it up. It wasn't even a misunderstanding. He just he lied. Uh, and then he proceeded to use that lie in the build-up to the referendum as one of the um, I said, one of the reasons we need to leave the EU for a thing that doesn't exist. Absolute. As I said, I'm not a fan of Boris Johnson at all. Uh, this all started off originally as me explaining why proguing Parliament was a bad idea. Right, Let, let's let's go back to to the pro prorogation thing. So I'm getting completely off topic. If you're shutting down Parliament, you are prevent preventing. Oh, zombie spawned over there. I don't know. You are pre uh, preventing. Our democratic, democratically elected representatives from representing us. Now, it doesn't matter about Brexit in that situation. You are locking down Parliament, getting rid of democracy because you found it inconvenient to your agenda. And so that is, that is just completely unacceptable. The fact that anyone can defend that as a practice. But if your MP is working under the, you know, the votes that they receive, that is their duty. MP's primary duty is to their country. That's why they object to no deal. Even in places that uh, have a leave majority, the constituents may be a leave majority, but the MP still rejects no deal because their primary duty is to their country. And no deal is devastating to the country. We're talking... Uh, fresh food shortages we're talking fuel shortages we're talking medical shortages the government literally are stockpiling body bags to prepare for a no deal situation if we leave without a deal the death toll in the country will increase and they've had to stockpile body bags to try and well, he's not even trying to mitigate it, just to clean up after themselves. That's how terrible No Deal is. That it's... What the hell was that noise? It will literally kill people. No form of Brexit is worth the lives of our citizens. Staying in the EU is not worth the lives of our citizens. If I was being told... We, if I was given the choice, right? We can stay in the EU... But if you do so, a random percentage of the population will die. That's not worth it. It is just objectively not worth people's lives on this front. I mean, people's livelihoods are in uh, danger. Food banks didn't exist before the Tories came into power, as far as I'm aware. They have been created, as I said, in the last decade or so of austerity. And we're now going to enter food shortage on top of that. Job losses across the country, but all the people who you know, had jobs that relied on EU trade are all gone down the toilet. Yeah, no deal. And as I said, there's no mandate for it. The majority of the people voted against it in the last general election anyway. There is, It was not promised during the EU referendum. The Leave campaign exclusively campaigned for a deal in 2016. To my, again, to my knowledge, the only time that no deal was even discussed as an option was when David Cameron was talking on, um, was having an interview and basically said, 
Um, yeah, so the way it'll work is we'll invoke the Article 50, we then have two years to get a deal. If we don't get a deal, then we have to leave without one. Which, again, isn't strictly true because we've been able to ask for extensions. There was nothing to say we couldn't do that. All we need is the EU's approval to do such a thing. Which we have thus far received. Ah, one block of sand short, damn it. I'll just, I'll just get... There's one. So I'll fill all these holes in later. I just wanted to get my moat um, filled in. There we are. So that's ready now for water. Now, those of you who uh, remember the EU referendum may also remember that David Cameron was not on the Leave campaign. David Cameron was, in fact, the leader of the Remain campaign. So when he says... Yeah, this is what happen will happen. We will end up leaving without a deal if we do this. People didn't believe him. That's why they voted against him. It's absurd to try and use Remainer campaign um, promises, for lack of a better description. It wasn't even a promise. It was a, a warning. You can't use Remainer campaign warnings when... As I said, you just ignored them at the time. You dismissed it as Project Fear. And Project Fear isn't a thing. Project Fear is just a succinct way of saying, I don't like the data you're presenting and can't argue against it. So I will just dismiss it without arguing about it instead. The idea that the data is in some way tainted because it is scary data. Because it is scary data, it must have been made to be scary. If it has been made to be scary, then it is fabricated, so we don't need to listen to it. Now, that's not, that's not how data works. Data is data. How it's interpreted matters, but you're not interpreting it in a different way. You're just dismissing it as, it is scary, I don't like scary things, thus I don't need to listen to you. So yeah, that was, that was the only time... To my knowledge, that no deal was brought up. Maybe it was brought up um, by uh, some lesser members of the Leave campaign, but certainly Michael Gove never brought it up. In fact, this year he said he was uh, on the record as saying that no deal was not what people voted for in 2016 and was not what he campaigned for in 2016. He is now, of course, working with Boris Johnson to the end of a no deal Brexit. One of the, uh, the tweets I made relatively recently was how the um, current cabinet seems to be working with... Uh, everyone, everyone seems to be trying to impersonate a different Batman villain. So as I said, uh, Boris Johnson's the Joker, the man without a plan. Michael Gove, clearly Two-Face. Uh, Pretty Patel, who seems to want uh, um, people to... Uh, prisoners to, to be terrified, to... Uh, quake in fear at the mere idea of, of the penalty she's going to inform. Scarecrow, obviously. Um, Jacob Rees-Mogg uh, has been compared to... He's a mixture of two, to be perfectly honest. He is a bit like uh, the Penguin in the way he looks, acts and dresses, right down to the top hat. Um, but he also has a very almost uncanny resemblance to um, Ra's al Ghul. In that he appears to be... Oh, how, how did someone phrase, someone phrase it brilliantly uh, in the um, in one of the responses to it? I said something like, he is uh, a confirmed haunted Victorian pencil uh, who should have died about 50 years ago and just sort of hasn't got round to it. And yeah, it's sort of... I said... Bizarre and terrifying how <laughs> uncannily similar to Batman villains the current cabinet is. Uh, this is the, again, this is the, the problem with, with Brexit. There's so many little tiny nuances to stuff. You can't start talking about one thing without talking about another. And then the, the flow completely disappears. On the plus side, my pyramid is basically complete. Bam! That looks terrible. How do I... Can I... No, I want... Oh. I want them all to look like this corner. Why, why won't it look like the corner? 
Look like the corner. Is it? Can I put it? Can I poke point at that? Hmm. What? Why? Why is this a thing? Look. Why, why would you go into the corner? Why is it doing it for those two and not these two? Now it just looks weird. I don't... I don't want it to look weird. I want it to look nice. It looks nice all the way up to here. And now it just looks stupid at the top. Hmm. There's gotta be a way of doing it. Now it looks even less like a pyramid. How is this happening? Okay, I think I have a plan. I think what I need to do is... So that's facing that way. So if I take this one and rotate myself 90 degrees to put it down. And then rotate myself 90 degrees to put that one down. Then rotate myself 90 degrees to put that one down. Yes! Victory for the Dark Lord. I have made the pyramid. How do I... Yeah! Yeah! Yay! That's this way. Yay, I made a pyramid. This has taken literally hours and uh, days of effort to put together. And I don't have a way into it. Which means I've put it all together and I'm going to take some of it apart to make an entrance. But first, as I say, I'm going to get my, my moat in place. I have something of an idea of what I want to do. So the plan is, I'll, I'll talk through the whole plan, is I'm going to make an entrance... Uh, well, maybe not here. I don't like this coming out. I'll go on the other side. So what I'll do is I'll make an entrance on the desert side. Right? And what I'm thinking... So yeah, so it's dead entrance here. Right? And then I'm going to go almost to the top. And I'm going to dig out a channel. Right? And I'm going to have water flowing down that into the moat on both sides of the entrance. Yeah, fill the moat up all around the edge. Uh, and then build a sort of a bridge, um, maybe a, uh, maybe out of out of. I haven't decided what I'm going to make the bridge out of. Uh, for the moment, I'm going to protect, go with the cut sandstone. I may change it to wood if I think it looks nicer. But that's that's the plan, the overall plan. So I guess what I'm going to do is make myself that entrance. Oh sure, now there's no monsters in it. How does that make any bloody sense? I say there's light in here, but clearly I need to put a few more down. So let's... The problem is when building things like this is you go, right, okay, I'll, I'll make a thing. There we are, that looks big enough. Oh dear, no, it really isn't. So, as I say, my original intention was to have you know, several rooms in here and, and you know, different levels doing stuff. So I put the enchantment stuff at the top and I think I'm going to have to tunnel down to, to make the most out of this area, I think. Because um, I'm planning to put my nether portal when I finally get around to making one. That's going to go underground, which, you know, makes sense. You enter the, enter an ancient tomb and you've got to go down to to get your way into what is basically hell. That's, that's not mince words. That's the design of that. So let's get going. Okay, so there, I've got my entrance into it. Okay, so I'm going to need blocks around the edge that. Okay, and then I'm going to build sort of a, a kind of like a front porch kind of arrangement here, something sticking out. And then, I said I'll mine all of these steps off on each side up to the, towards the top. And then just have two streams of water coming down. How well that'll work, I don't really know until I get there. Nope, skelly bro, don't want to deal with a skelly bro. Let's go to bed and deal with this in the morning. Right. Betty boys. Man, I've been recording for about an hour and the entire thing has been... What's that whistling sound? Has been me mining, which is not interesting to watch, and waffling about Brexit. This is why what I wanted to do was to make um, like an analogy of the tap dancer like video where I, I pre-write everything and just put a sort of slideshow like arrangement to it. I'm gonna kill, kill that thing, whatever it is. The problem is the country's in such a state of flux at the moment that 
whenever I've tried to make videos like this, I tried making one about the, the Brexit party um, around the time of the EU referendum. But the problem is they take so long to make that by the time I actually made it, the EU elections were over with. But I mean, it was quite... I liked the, the, the design of the video as well. I called it the, the five stages of Brexit party grief. Because I was actually going through the five stages of grief about the uh, the setup my country was finding itself in. You know, um, if you're unfamiliar, you start off with denial. You go through um, anger, bargaining, depression, acceptance in the end. Um, and just the, the, the concept that this country would be so... I said polit almost politically bankrupt that it would look at Nigel Farage, because the Brexit Party has, has no nothing standing for it. It was literally a Nigel Farage is a thing that exists. Give us votes now, please. Um, and the idea that anybody could look at Nigel Farage and go, "Yep, that's a man who needs my vote." It. I said I would alternate between going. The the polls must just be biased. People always give out slightly different results when. The, uh, the actual elections come around. So maybe it's just that's the case. Oh my god, there's three or four polls all doing it. And it's like, how can people be that... The thing is, if you're voting for the Brexit Party, I sort of got to the conclusion that you must either be stupid or racist. I think that, that was the... the when I, At my angriest, that was the the only conclusion I could draw. was because... I said either you some, for some reason believed... Um things Nigel Farage said, in which case you're a moron, or you agreed with him, in which case you were a racist. Um, now, I admit that, as I said, that was me at my angriest when it came to um, to the Brexit party. Uh, there certainly is an element of that still, but it, it's not one of those, they're the only two options. There are a lot of people who, who believe Nigel Farage, and the reason is is because they're not that bright. There are a lot of people who agree with Nigel Farage because they don't like foreign people. But there are people who, for whom it is a, um, is it a protest vote, for lack of a better Can I turn steps back into blocks? I don't think I can. No. 65 sets of stone steps for me. Uh, I've got to go mine some more sand there. Um, so yeah, as I, said, I made this this um, most of the way through the video, uh, and it just became more and more evident that I wasn't going to be able to finish it in time for the the elections because the the, end, the the final bit was about how it was important for people to turn up and and vote in the EU elections because even if if they chose not to vote, then effectively they were um, agreeing with Nigel Farage in absentium. Um, you know, a, a lot of the uh, for a while, I thought my local MP was going to be supporting Boris Johnson by inaction, um, that she would not stand against what he was saying and doing, um, but all, but would not... Well, well, she wouldn't come out and say, oh, yeah, I agree with it. She has since basically come out and said that she agrees with him, which is as a terrible. But the idea that my... I, I, have, I don't think I've ever voted Tory in my area. I will stand corrected. I may have done. But as far as I recall, I've never voted for the Tory party in this area. I may have done once at university, um, but that was when Labour had been in charge for a long time. Um, and, and like most people, I think I just got sick of <laughs> sick of Labour being the uh, being in charge. Because that's, that's sort of what happens with uh, certainly in Australia. They have that sort of each party runs for basically about a decade, and everyone gets sick of them and gives the other party a turn. So you end up running in sort of a political cycle. So I, I basically, all, all my life that I've been aware of politics, um, you know, Tony Blair had been Prime Minister and then Gordon Brown became Prime Minister. Um, I just, I don't, I honestly do, can't remember who was Prime Minister before Tony Blair? John Major? Probably John Major. It seems like a sort of time span. I, I, I'll stand corrected. I'll be perfectly honest. I genuinely can't remember. Um, but I do remember that the first Prime Minister I remember being a Prime Minister was Tony Blair. Um, so yeah, so I, I think I voted Tory 
when I was at university, when it was like the first vote I was actually old enough to participate in. Is that, did I just make cut sandstone or sandstone? Let's cut sandstone as well. Um, but I don't think in this area I've ever voted for the Tory party. Um, but the idea that my... Is there a creeper in there now? What are you doing in there? Get, get your ass out here. Come over here. Come here. Naughty creeper. Yeah, get up, get up, get up. what are you going to do about it? Come on. Come at me, bro. Yeah, it didn't end well for you, did it? I was half expecting to be snuck up on by another creeper and all of that. Oh, god damn it. How, how are they spawning in there? There must be enough light to stop that happening, surely. I think this. I think he smothered himself. Oh no, I think maybe he walked into the light and got fire. Just ignited. Stop it. Jesus. For a diamond sword, this is taking a lot of time to kill these creatures. Are they, are they spawning in these corners over here? Like this particular bit here is dark enough to spawn them? Is that what's happening? Does it happen during the day? No, I think. It happens at night. It doesn't happen during the day. There's nothing spawning in there now. So, oh god, there's whatever. But now, as I was saying, the idea that my uh, democratically elected representative was arguing in favour of not representing me. I mean, as I said, she's, she's not one I voted for. She didn't get. Um, she's not had my. Jesus, how much bloody stuff do I need? Um, so it's not like it's the person I voted for is not representing me. But regardless, she is my representative. She's the only... Oh, what the hell happened there? How did that happen? Whatever. She's the only person in Parliament specifically there to represent people in my area. I am in my area, so she is my representative. The idea that she could stand there with a straight face and say, Boris Johnson is well within his rights to prevent me from representing my constituents... That is a travesty. That is absolutely disgraceful. That's it, because he claims that it's... Boris Johnson claims that he's proroguing Parliament... I'm going back a couple of conversations, because why the hell not? Um, that he's proroguing Parliament so he can work out an agenda for the NHS. That That's his argument. It is a lie. And everyone knows it is a lie. Even the courts know it is a lie. But they can't actually do anything about it, because, as we said, strictly speaking... He is working within the letter of the law. I'll make those. And... Um, but yeah, it's just... I said it is absolutely disgraceful that any... I need to make this look nicer somehow, but I don't know how yet. I'll... Oh, maybe I do know how. I said the idea that any politician can with a straight face say I'm not representing you in but in Parliament and that is a good thing that is I said it I just, that's not on I don't care what side of the brexit debate you are on if you're trying to argue that our democratically evo um, elected represent what the hell democratically elected representatives not representing us is in the best interests of anything. What the hell? Why is that happening? You're wrong. You were just objectively wrong. Let's let's just leave it at that. A okay, representative can't represent us if they're not allowed to represent us. This shouldn't need explaining, and yet here we sodding are. There we go. Can I get any better? That's looking a bit better. Yeah, let's let's go with that. This is. This is coming together. And then we can put the, the water feature on in a bit. Hmm. I think, in order to make this look good, I've got to mine all of these off. And the other side. these in here. What? Why did I do that? I, I honestly do not understand the logic of Minecraft sometimes. There we go. Um, I better 
do this one as well. There we go. That looks better. Yeah, let's go with this. I'm, it's coming together nicely now. Right, I'm going to make sure I... It's pointed at exactly the right place in order for it to, to work. It's got a pretty good means of... You know, it'll automatically shape the block, but uh, it doesn't necessarily shape it in a way that makes logical sense. And I, but I do understand that sometimes you do want blocks to be in seemingly bizarre orientations for aesthetic reasons later on. But uh, yeah, so every now and then I go to put something down and it just goes into a really weird way and I don't know. Given how long this video is, I'm going to have to edit the crap out of this. Hopefully, the problem is I've been talking almost constantly about Brexit, and I don't know how much of it I can edit out to make, to still make sense. I was wondering what all those effects were, obviously a load of things have just died. Hey, free stuff, ow. Bones and arrows. Man, I love coming out into the desert first thing in the morning. Because it spawns all these skeletons, but then they've got nowhere to, sh to hide in the, the day. So they all burn, I get a load of free stuff. Out in the, the forests over there, or even over in the meadows over there, there's so many trees that they just hide under that instead. Hmm. Maybe I should change these blocks to, instead of being cut sandstone, to being regular sandstone. Because I'm not liking the... I'm not liking this textural change here and there. I don't know. We'll leave that in the comments for you guys to decide. I'll, I'll leave it for now. Um, but uh, if I get a bunch of people saying, no, no, you need to change it to sandstone, it just looks too weird like that. We'll do that. But Okay, do I have... I don't have my bucket. Right, let me... I'm going to have to think how to make these this uh, water flow as well, in the directions I want, rather than just spill over the entire thing. So that might be an interesting challenge. So I'm basically having to build sort of aqueduct. Right, where's the bucket? I have one. There's a problem with uh, filing systems in Minecraft. You actually have to do them manually, and after a while, you've got so much stuff that uh, you don't really want to spend half an hour just moving random block A from random block A to random chest B. Right then. So let's... This is one of the things I basically have to figure out by experimentation. I think I'm going to give myself a block on either side. I think if I take this one away it's just going to look weird. So if I take these ones away... Hmm. I'll put water here. What do you do? But that, that's this experiment. Does that flow nicely down into the moat? Yes. So I think I'm still going to cut out a few, a few more. They're all good there, there, there. You can see where it suddenly changes. Let's mine out these. I'm going to have to pick the water up and put it back in again because it's uh, flowing in weird ways now. You can see I've got a bump in the <laughs> the river. The, ah, bump in the flow up there. Whee! Okay. I've probably carried the uh, some of my equipment to a weird place, but we'll do that later. Right, so I put this back up here. It flows down there. Doop doop to do. If I was do that on the other side. Hmm. I'm thinking what I may what I may want to do is instead of having it just start there to make this entire all the way up to here make this one sort of continuous stream have it flow down the other side let's, let's see 
So if I tunnel there, does it flow down? Okay, so if I get rid of all these. Problem is this uh this pyramid's only the one block thick. So in other words, I can't take out these ones without not having a pyramid anymore. Right, so I'm gonna go down here like this. So I'm thinking I may need to make some sandstone fences or something. Oh, is that? Did I do that right? Yeah, yeah, that's why I can the side one. So let's let's do go do that. A smart man would have built a crafting table next to his pyramid. I am not a smart man. Not when it comes to Minecraft. Right, so if I... Yeah, sandstone. Fen... no. F fence? That's a slab. Well, actually, no, I could make some slabs. That would work. Would that work? No, it wouldn't work in the way I want it to. Okay, let's find the stone walls. Why is stone wall not here? Ah, oh, there it is. Okay, so it works for andesite, but not cut sandstone. What are you saying? Well, who? Maybe it works with regular sandstone. Go work with something. But that means getting more sand. There. I'll just I'll just get sand. I'm not going all the way back to the I'll just I'll just get this. I'll just get this. Be, it'll be right. It'll be fine. There are no negative repercussions to making steeper drops around the place I spend most of the time. Sandstone walls have got to be a thing. That they just they have to be. So do 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 do. I don't really. I need one more sand. God damn it! You are one more sand. Bam. That's the other problem with Minecraft is that you uh, you go out gather materials and you always find yourself a ra either a random number too short or a random number too many. Right. Sandstone walls. Bam. Why I can't do that with cut sandstone when cut sandstone and regular sandstone both make the same set of stairs, I don't know. Let's... benefit of this is I can just swim up. I can swim up here. And once I'm up, I can walk. Right then. So, I want to go... Bam. 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 What? Why'd you go there? It was not the place that I was doing a look. Yeah. There we are. And I'll put the water all the way along here and it can flow back down there. Neat. So this is basically, it's going to require a lot of water. And that means I need to make something slightly different just so I can get things going. So, if you're unfamiliar with the water physics in Minecraft, here's basically how they work. If you've got, you've got still water like this, there's a water source block. Okay? Water source blocks when placed will then spread out. I, mean, I think I broke something. Oh, I broke the sand. That's fine. Um, and we'll go from a water source block to a, a flowing water block. You can't pick up flowing water. You can pick up source blocks. But if two source blocks flow into the same um, into the same empty block, they then become a um, a water. They, they, they make that other block water. Let me show you. I'll show you with these. Okay. So, if I put water there, that's a water source block and it's flowing into those. Okay. So, that I can't pick up because it's flowing water. That I can't pick up because it's flowing water. 
That I can't pick up because it's flowing water. That's the water source block, so I can pick it up. See? Right. So I can pick up this one up here. Now. When I put another one here, this will become a water source block and will be flowing into these two in the corner. Which means both of those two in the corner will have water source blocks flowing straight into them, making all four of them water source blocks. So now I can pick up any one of them and it will replace the other ones. So this is a... Basically I've made an infinity pool. As in, I can take water out of this and it will always refill itself. Not a infinity pool like the um, swimming pools in... Uh, what's the pools? On top of skyscrapers, they do this thing where they make the swimming pool really, really full and it's like a special mirrored floor and all sorts. So the uh, it looks like it goes straight from water to horizon. They're very pretty um, and potentially terrifying. Do that. So, if I... so that's water source. That's so I should be able to take them out here now and just fill them along like this. Because there's water source blocks on either side of the things. So if I pick one up, it gets replaced. Wait, what? Why are you going over there? Who told you to go there? Hat was. What? 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 Why? Minecraft, explain! Explain what you are currently doing. Explain how that makes any sodding sense. Oh, I must have put it on the wrong side of this somehow. I mean, buggered if I know how, but I guess I did. There we are. So that up here is now all water source. Slowing down here, but unfortunately... I need to... I need to block it off because this water's all went to stupid places because somehow the water went in the wrong way. Great. Yes, yeah, this is great. That's, that's what I wanted. That's what I wanted all along. That water source. There we are. Right. That's a lot of skelly bros. And I'm going to go straight nope out of that. I mean, I can take them, but I've got 17 levels of experience I don't want to waste by accidentally dying from creeper and skeleton invasion. Sleepy time for the Dark Lord. I've been playing this game for an hour and a half. God only knows how uh, long you guys have had to watch this. The editing's going to take an age as well. That's going to be interesting. Right then, so let's go back to the sucks. I've still got to fill in this entire pool. What do you want, weird desert zombie man? I really don't know what you things are or why you can survive in the sunlight. My understanding was zombies were supposed to burn to death in the sun, but you're clearly not exactly a zombie. But I don't know what you are. You are a thing that gets in my way and thus shall meet the sharp end of my sword. Think about the logic in the physics here. I emptied a bucket of water over here. I'm now e taking buckets of water from over there and putting them over here, and the moat is filling up as a result of these actions. I'm just infinitely spawning water. This is not how existence works. 
If it did, there'd be no water shortage in the world. Take one bucket of water, you could spread it between about half a bazillion people. Almost there. And bam. I think I've done it. There we are. Get that random block out of the way. Okay, I have made myself a pyramid. It looks like it's a crying... Um, Deku Scrub from Legend of Zelda. I hear you burning in the background there, wherever you are. God knows. I just made it look sad. It was supposed to look, like, majestic. I've just made a sad pyramid. Oh... I'm eat some steak, cheer myself up. But yeah, that's the uh, the completion of the project I had in mind. I think the uh, the next few steps, which uh, obviously I'm not going to do now, I've been recording this for way longer than I intended to, is I think I get I want to make some sticky pistons underneath this lot, so that it has a sort of a rock wall that comes up and down, sort of as the opening. And closing of the doors. Uh, obviously I've got to actually move stuff inside next. Um, I'll put a load of things underneath that water to get rid of that dripping effect. Don't know what I'll do with it yet. In fact, actually, I might just make that the... Because I want multiple floors to this as arrangement. So I might make that the second, the third of the first floor. Ground floor, stairs up to first floor. What do you think? One, two, three... A little bit high ceilings, but yeah, I can work with that. Yeah. But first... No. More. Monsters. Spawning in the pyramid. I want to get some better lighting. Designs, because the torches are practical, not very aesthetic. So, it means either redstone torches, glowstone maybe... There we go. Put one in the middle as well. Make everything nice and bright. Can I get one up there? No, can't get one up to the top there. But, but yeah, okay. So that's my my contribution to the YouTube world of Minecraft. It's crap, but it is the best I am capable of. Seriously, where is that skeleton? I can hear dying around here. Over here. Whatever. Okay. Yeah, that, that, that's that that looks slightly less like a depressed Deku scrub. It still looks like a depressed Deku scrub, but not quite as badly as before. That'll do. Bye. Brexit's a bad idea, and we should cancel it immediately.